Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be painting some of the Spartan tanks for Legions Imperialis. Now let's talk about prep. Uh, so as you can see, I left all of my spawns and weapons off and then all of the tanks otherwise are fully assembled. Now for priming, I had primed everything gray and then I used ink tent cyan uh, to fill in the shadows. And then I did a zenithal with ink tense white uh, so that we had a really nice light gray on the top. But then as you start to fade down the sides, you get blue. Now that might seem a little bit weird uh, since if you've been following the videos, you know that I'm doing Sons of Horus. Uh, but today we're going to play around with the idea of swapping our primary color and our secondary color just so that we can add some variety uh, to the force. And using these undertones will be perfect for the translucent paints that we're going to use throughout the video. Now for the sponsons, I went ahead and primed those silver uh, since these are largely going to be metallic. Uh, but we're going to set these aside for now, and we're going to work on the hulls of the tanks first. All right, so with the Sons of Horus, their primary color is usually a teal uh, sort of green, and then they'll have a secondary color of black. And now we're going to invert that. So we're going to use Contrast Black Templar to cover most of the hull of all of the tanks. So we're just going to load up our brush, and since this is our first layer, we can be somewhat messy with this. But we're just going to go ahead and cover all of the armored surfaces. And as this covers the, the white areas, you're going to get sort of a, a nice gray effect. But as it covers the areas that have that blue tone, you're going to end up with a slightly darker uh, color in the shadows. This is just a very easy, quick way to add some contrast, pun intended, uh, to your uh, epic scale miniatures. So any black miniatures that you're going to have, so like uh, if you're working on Raven Guard or you know, black vehicles like I am for the Sons of Horus, or iron hands, uh, this technique will work really, really well for you. So with uh, Black Templar applied, we're ready to move on to the teal elements. And so what I'm going to pick out on the vehicle are going to be all of the egress points. So the front assault hatch and then the two side doors. And we're going to use Sons of Horus Green on all of these areas. We're just going to go ahead and apply a couple of layers of this. If you've seen any of my previous uh, Sons of Horrors videos, you'll know that this paint is notoriously thin, even for a Games Workshop layer paint. So you're definitely going to need probably two coats uh, to get good coverage over the black. And unfortunately, even if we had left these areas white, you'd probably still need a couple of coats. Uh, so just take your time and be patient and go ahead and get some nice solid coverage on these areas. So we've got all of the Sons of Horus green applied to the accent areas of the tank. Uh, so now we're going to move on with our base coats and we're going to work on the tracks. And for that, I'm going to use polished metal from Ammo by Mick. And nothing too fancy here. This paint covers fairly well. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and run this over all of the track sections. And you do want to make sure that on the sides, you use the side of your brush and you just cover those as well and be very careful that you don't get this on your black armor. All right, so with the tracks out of the way, we're now going to move on to Dwarven Gold and we're going to be applying this to all of the coils of any last guns 
or last cannons rather that you might have on your miniature and you want to try to be as neat as possible with this uh, so I'm bracing my elbows on my table definitely don't want to get this on any of the armor that we've already painted but if you spill it over to other parts of the gun that's okay we can cover that up in our next step and don't forget about the sponsons uh, we'll want to hit these as well and to finish uh base coating the sponsons we're going to give them an all over coat with basiliconum gray no need to thin this down we want to essentially shade down all of the metallic shine just move this around and get it all into all of the little nooks and crannies of the details so while we wait for the sponsons to dry we're going to move on to adding some shade to the tank and doing a little uh, simulated weathering so we're going to start with the teal armor and we're going to give that some green dark deep shade from ak and we're just going to go straight from the pot with this and we're just going to give a nice coat all over the teal areas so next up we're going to dry brush the tanks with ammo's do light metal now this is an optional step but it's a great way to simulate chipped paint on these epic scale miniatures so we bloated up the brush and we're gonna get most of this off on a paper towel i like to do the old hand test to see how much paint I've got it loaded and we don't want a lot on the brush and now all we're going to do is very lightly just drag the brush so that it catches on all of the raised detail going from front to back and also make sure that you hit the top section of the tank as well and these exhaust pipes and with that little bit of chipping done we're going to hit these exhaust pipes with a little bit of pure grime deep shade from AK and that'll give it just a nice dirty sooty appearance. And again we're going straight from the pot with this. This will just add a slight brown tint to these areas to make them look nice and filthy. With that complete we've got one last acrylic step to do and we're going to give the tank an all over shade with my actually i don't have a name for this yet working title epic wash uh, but it's one pot of the new non oil the 18 millimeter shade pot and then half a pot of distilled water and half a pot of the army painter speed paint medium and just a couple of drops of uh, flow aid just to keep it flowing and this thins down the Nuln oil, in my opinion, to the right consistency for the detail on these epic scale miniatures. And using this could not be any easier. We are literally just going to slap this all over the tank. And now you'll notice I switch to a flat brush, and that'll just help me keep it moving into all of the recesses since we're using or painting rather a lot of flat panels so next we're going to black out all of the last cannon barrel shrouds and for that we're going to use contrast black legion and you'll notice i've mounted the sponson las cannons uh, onto the tanks and you'll want to make sure that you use super glue for that uh, since you don't want to ruin the paint that we've already got on the tank and here is the tank after we have blacked out the barrel shrouds now if you wanted you could stop here i'd be more than happy to to put these tanks on the battlefield in a game uh, but I am going to go away, put some decals on these, and then we're going to do just a couple of final details that will really help the tank stand out. All right, so we've got the transfers applied. So the tanks are now ready for those final details. 
Uh, so what we're going to do here first is take care of the couple of lights and lenses uh, that are on the tank. So you've got sort of a targeting uh, lens here. Then there's the copula periscope. And then it's kind of hard to see, but you've got these little lights on top of your sponsons. Uh, so to do that, we're going to use my favorite method of chroming them out first uh, with some Vallejo Chrome. Any super light silver paint works for this. And then we're going to hit it with the Meg Crystal Red. So when you do this, guys, you're going to want to use a really tiny, tiny brush and stabilize uh, yourself. So I've got my elbows on my desk. And you don't want to apply too much pressure. You really just need to touch the details with the side of the brush and that'll just deposit just enough paint to cover those uh, those areas and after you've given that chrome a couple minutes to dry we're now going to come in with the crystal red and when you use those crystal paints you want to make sure you give them a good shake uh, before you go ahead and put it on your palette uh, it will separate and it can be a little uh, hard to get a good effect if you don't mix it well. But we're just going to do the same thing and just lightly touch our brush to those areas. So now we're going to add a little bit of environmental weathering uh, just to kind of break up. So we've got so many cool colors with this blue black hull. Uh, so we're going to add some warm uh, tones in our weathering. Uh, and this is going to be super simple, guys. Nothing too, too complicated. Uh, we're going to turn to the AK Liquid Pigments. Uh, so if you haven't seen some of my other videos where I use these, it's just pigment suspended in a uh, enamel uh, paint medium. And then there's no uh, binder in it. And it does have a touch of um, uh, sealant in it. So when it dries, it'll turn kind of dusty. And you shouldn't be able to, to rub it off. It should be sealed in. And really, you've only got you know one or two steps to get this applied. Uh, these are an absolute godsend. Uh, if you want to do any sort of dusty effects on uh, some highly textured models. So for the mud... Uh, we're going to use dark mud and dry mud, and then we're going to add a little bit of dust uh, with the appropriately named dust. Uh, so I've got these transferred to a metal palette already. Because there's no binder, it's very easy for the pigment to sort of separate. So it helps to decant uh, a little bit out onto a metal palette so that if it starts to separate on the palette, you can just mix it up like I am here. Uh, so we're actually gonna start with the dry mud, and we're gonna kind of run this underneath the tracks. And this is just gonna add some really subtle brown tones in those areas. So with that applied, we're gonna clean our brush and a little bit of odorless uh, mineral spirits and get that extra dampness off on a paper towel. And so now we're gonna move into the dark mud and we're gonna apply this to the flat sections of the track pads. So all you really need to do is just kind of touch this onto the pad and it will disperse itself and just go along each section and get a layer of this down. And once you've got the, the tracks covered, you can also apply this in some areas of the tank that would kind of make sense. So at the bottom of the assault ramp, as the tank is sort of driving and mud is splashing everywhere, you'd probably have a little bit down toward there. And then also at the top of the assault ramp, where it's going to be plunging down into the ground you'd end up with some dirt there as well and then you can also add some dried mud sort of in the middle 
where that mud would have splashed up but then started drying. You can also do this at the rear of the tank as well. While we're waiting on those to dry, you gotta figure our Spartan tank here would be crashing through, you know, rubble and debris and buildings and all sorts of other things. Uh, so it's gonna accumulate some dust. So we can apply some of this dust pigment in uh, spots around the hull that would kind of make sense. So anywhere where you'd sort of have uh you know grooves and spaces for the dust to get trapped uh like here on these hinges for the assault ramp and this line where you know the assault hatch kind of starts to run into the hull of the tank you can drop some of this pigment in and because of the capillary action it'll sort of hug that line and you'll get some nice dusty looking effects when it dries you can also do this along the sides of the hull and the sponsing covers are another really great place so here that dust pigment is starting to to dry out and it looks a little bit crazy because we applied it with a brush but the beauty of an enamel product is that you can go back in with a little bit of thinner and clean it up pretty quickly. So I've got a Tamiya uh, cotton bud. And these are nice because they're super tightly wound and they don't really fray on you as much as a standard cotton bud you might get in the pharmacy. And after you soak it and get that excess off, you can kind of just run this over the areas that didn't really make sense and it's got a nice pointed tip so you can kind of get into some of the the detail areas and you can literally just erase uh where you've uh got too much of the pigment and refine this to get a more realistic look and the cotton bud is still too big to get completely into all of the recesses so it's going to leave that dust pigment deep in the recesses while cleaning up your your flat surfaces all right so here go one of the finished tanks uh i do have to apologize so the last step that i had recorded was applying this ak dust and then once it started drying it was super light uh, so I hurried up and used a little rubble dust and just applied it right over it, kind of mixed them together uh, so that I could get a more appropriate color. Uh, but I forgot to film that. Uh, I was rushing and I don't know what happened. But anyway, so here go the final uh, finished tanks. I think they turned out pretty good for the limited amount of effort that was put into them. Uh, that dust down in the recesses of the model really helps break up all of that black. And then the mud effects, uh, I think, turned out absolutely fantastic. I really love the, the dried mud uh, on the assault hatch. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty much all I've got for this video. I do want to give a massive shout out uh, to our channel member, Mr. Roland Lucas. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel just like him, uh, you can go ahead and click the join button down below. Uh, that's a huge help here. We're a small channel, so any donations uh, that anybody happens to throw my way are greatly appreciated and go into essentially keeping the lights on and uh, buying more model kits so I can paint them and review them for all of you guys. So yeah, so that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content, do me a huge favor, like, uh, subscribe so that you get notifications of when I release new videos. Uh, coming up here soon, 
Uh, the Sorcerer Kings have released for Conquest uh, this month. I've got all of my Wave 1 product uh, actually in my hands right now. And I will be doing some videos for that over the coming few weeks. Uh, so if you're into Conquest, uh, keep it locked in here and I'll catch you in the next video.